welcome to episode 50 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week, Daniel Hazen and Denise Rollheiser were the only people to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering my challenging questions. The first question from last week was, what two things did I use to fertilize the garden in last week's farming video? The answer is Bokashi and Nuka rice bran. The second question from last week was, how many people did you see working in last week's Tarami Nozomi video? The answer is one person. I want to thank Daniel Hazen for noticing that my 11th vlog episode is not on my YouTube playlist. Earlier today I reloaded episode 11 and linked it with my YouTube playlist. During the past week, cicadas or semi have been announcing the arrival of summer here in Japan. They'll be trying to attract mates for the next three weeks from their favorite resting place, sakura trees. In today's vlog I will show you how to cook a simple and delicious dish using chicken, eggs and rice called oyako donburi. I will also give you a short tour of an interesting harbor not far from Inasa Mountain, Nagasaki's Sunset Marina. Let's get started. Oyako Danburi is rather easy to make. Oyako means parent and child in Japanese, in this case chicken and egg. To make three servings of Oyako Danburi, I will use three medium-sized onions, three 200 gram servings of steamed rice in large boils like this one, a half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, about 15 leaves of mitsuba parsley, Two hundred and seventy grams of sliced chicken breast, three grams of bonito or katsu dashi, six eggs from which I have isolated three egg yolks, three tablespoons of mirin. and three tablespoons of shoyu. Today I'll be using just one small fry pan on the stove. I will start by cutting up the onions and mitsuba on a cutting board. This dish is best with thin slices of onion that have two layers. You can peel apart the layers with your fingers just like this. The mitsuba parsley can be sliced into wide stripes using a sharp knife. In Japanese, mitsuba means three leaves, as in three leaf parsley. I have finished cutting up all the onions and mitsuba, and I'll leave the slices on this cutting board while I prepare the oyako donbudi sauce in a fry pan. I will add about half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, three tablespoons of soy sauce, Three tablespoons of mirin, and about three grams of katsuo dashi, about half of this package.
I'll stir these ingredients up in a fry pan on a low heat setting using a spatula. Now that the dashi has completely dissolved, I'll add the chicken slices and continue stirring the sauce. Next I'll carefully add the onion slices from the cutting board. Maybe it'll be easier if I use my hand rather than this knife. Now I have to let this chicken simmer at a higher heat setting for about 10 minutes to cook it thoroughly. For this I'll need to cover the fry pan with a lid. Now that the chicken is well cooked, I will mix this large bowl of eggs with a fork. I don't need to mix the egg white and yolks completely. I just want to break up the, all of the egg yolks. That should be fine. Then I'll drizzle the eggs over the other ingredients in the fry pan and allow the eggs to cook partially on a low heat. Less than two minutes should do. The eggs need to be runny for this dish. Now I'll swirl the runny eggs on this fry pan to heat them up and completely cover the chicken and onions. I'll use the spatula to scrape the eggs off the edge of the pan and then add the mitzvah parsley on top of the mixture. Just a few more seconds on the stove and it'll be ready to serve. Now that it's just the right consistency, I will transfer a third of this delicious mixture on top of a bowl of freshly steamed rice. This one right here. The object is to completely hide the rice below. I'll use this large metal spoon to get the job done quickly. This dish is also popular with Sancho pepper and even sake. If you don't have any mirin, you can use more shoyu and sugar. Depending on your taste, you may want to skip the salt. After all, there is salt in the soy sauce. For the last step, I will make a small pit with this tablespoon and carefully insert one of the egg yolks that I separated earlier. The taste and texture of this dish is sure to please. Try to make it yourself and see what you think. Voila, Oyako Damburi. I'm now in the parking lot in front of Nagasaki's Sunset Marina. This facility is near the town of Fukuda, about a 15 minute drive from downtown Nagasaki. Let's go inside and have a look around. This building is the Villas Guest Center. It's a great facility, but there aren't many guests here today. On the first floor, there is a reception area, a lobby, a restaurant, and a room set aside for wedding consultations. 
This facility was set up in 1993, 28 years ago. Although business has dropped off quite a bit during the pandemic, this facility provides wedding ceremonies and receptions, fishing and sightseeing charters, dining by the sea, pleasure boat rentals, on-site boat maintenance, moorage for up to 100 boats, and land storage for up to 90 boats. It's the largest pleasure craft marina in Nagasaki Prefecture. Here are some of the vessels that are up on blocks next to this guest center. I'm now on the second floor balcony of the Vilas, looking down at the boats in storage, mostly cabin cruisers and small yachts. Up ahead on the right, there are large photos of the events and scenery available at Sunset Marina. As you can see, many of them are wedding reception photos. This is a great place to park the car, walk along the sea, and view the coastline from Fakuda Bay. At the end of this balcony is an outdoor Tabihodai dining area, which faces the sea. From here, I'll take the red brick path to the seaside village and the seawall ahead. Here is the path sign for Sunset Marina's seaside village. Across Fukuda Bay, you can see the fifth largest shipbuilding dock in the world, Mitsubishi's Million Ton Dock. As I pan to the right, you can see Iwo Jima Island and the bridge leading to it. Here's a better view of the sailboats in Sunset Marina's mooring harbor. It's overcast today and there are very few people here in Seaside Village or along the sea wall. The Villa Guest House is in this direction. Before I return there, I will show you the view from the seawall path over here on my left. Here are two of the large anchors on this lawn. They are impressive, but not nearly as large as the anchor in front of Nagasaki Central Harbor. In the distance, on the right side of Iojima Island is a large fuel freighter moored at sea. This seawall is lined with hundreds of these huge concrete tetrapods, similar to the ones that I showed you at Sonogi Harbor and Obama Harbor. The tall bluff in the distance is Fukurasaki. Notice the chapel steeple on top of the Villa Guest Center and Fukuda's elementary school on the left. To finish off this short tour, I'll cross a lawn and go between these two anchors. Above that blue barbecue shipping container on the far left are the towers on top of Mount Inasa, the place that I showed you in episode 46. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, what was the last thing I added to the Oyako topping before I added it to the rice? Second, how many large anchors are visible on the lawn at Seaside Village? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comments section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 51. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below and you can watch all of my vlog episodes on my online YouTube playlist. Today's B-roll involved cooking, so in episode 51, my B-roll will involve baking. 
Stay tuned for more interesting vlogs from and about Nagasaki. See you next week.